Welcome to all of you who have joined us as we observe the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let us pray at this Mass for each other's intentions. Please remember at Mass all who are ill, confined to their homes, in hospitals or nursing homes, as well as those on our parish prayer list. Our parish bishop's fund appeal activity is coming to a close. If you have not yet made a gift or pledge, please pray about your decision and make a pledge or a one-time gift. Pledge envelopes are located at the entrances of the church. Please place your Sunday offering in the offertory bins by the main entrance and in the parish center. There are signs above the bins. Holy Communion will be distributed after the celebration of Mass, and the Mass today is offered for the members of the parish. Please stand and join in singing our entrance hymn at the name of Jesus, which is on your leaflet. We will sing the first three stanzas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. As we gather this morning to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our faults and our failings, asking God for mercy and the change that we need to be his people in this world. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and to bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We pray. Lord God, Lamb of God. 
sins of the world. Breathe mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You say the Lord is not fair? Hear now, house of Israel, Is it my way that is unfair, or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, 
any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard, regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, become obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sisters, the Lord be with you. Listen now to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not, but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes or entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. My friends, the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hi. Hi. <laughs> change. Ch- change is the, is the operative key word in, in our gospel reading this morning from St. Matthew. Change describes the son of the parable who does change. And it also describes the, the chief priests and the elders who don't change. Now, some people have compared this passage in Matthew to the parable of the the prodigal son in St. Luke's Gospel, because both stories here revolve around two sons and a choice and change. And so it's it's clearly a theme that, that Jesus wants to drive home again and again to his listeners. And it's one that has been echoed down through history as the Christian faith has been passed on. This this notion here that there is another way to live, a better way to live, the Father's way, the Father's will. 
He's calling us. But are we listening? Are we answering? Are we changing? And the fact is, he has something in mind for each and every one of us. You know, the great Cardinal John Henry Newman, I think, put it beautifully. He said, God has created me to do him some definite service. He has committed some work to me which he has not committed to another. I am a link in a chain, a bond of connection between persons. He has not created me for naught. I shall do good. I shall do his work. Now that's a, that's a great concept, isn't it? A great idea. But it's not always easy to live that out, is it? But if we, if we listen to God who's trying to tell us something and follow his direction, we will always be amazed to find out where he's leading us. You know, 25 years ago, uh, a young man named uh, Peter Day was, was embarking on a, on a career as a sports writer in Australia. And he, he said over and over again, you know, sports, sports is my religion. And he never paid attention to his faith. He said, uh, I had your standard, boring Catholic upbringing and usually went to Mass just at Christmas and Easter. Do you know anybody like that? And he was, he was climbing the career ladder until finally he got a job as a sports writer at, at Australian radio. And one day, with nothing else to do, he happened to, to walk into a, into a church and sat in the, in the back row, where we all know where all the, the good Catholics sit, right? In the back row, right? When he got there, Mass had already started. But you know, it wasn't your ordinary Mass. It was a Mass that he had never experienced before in his whole life. It was a Mass just for homeless people. Just for homeless people. All the people around him had no place to live, no place to call home. And he said, you know, I remember sitting there among all these poor homeless people. And then the gospel came alive for me. That moment for that guy was transformative. And he knew that he, he just couldn't keep on doing what he was doing. And finally, he found a religion besides sports. And get, get this. Want to know something? A year later, he entered the seminary to study to become a priest. Isn't that amazing? That's such an amazing story. And while he was in the seminary, he asked his bishop if he could take on a special assignment. He wanted to live and work among the homeless. And his bishop agreed. And so for the last eight months of his formation as a priest, Peter Day lived at the bottom of a stairwell with nothing but a mattress. He showered every day in a restroom. He lived among the lonely, the fearful, the depressed, the mentally ill. And then when he was ordained a a transitional deacon, the, the, the last step to becoming a, a priest. His ordination took place where he volunteered every day at a shelter for recovering alcoholics. And now, as a priest, he runs a, a charity for the homeless in Australia. What an amazing story, isn't it? A guy, a guy who once seemed destined to have everything that he wanted in life now serves those folks who have nothing in their lives. And he's never been happier. And he said, you know, this is the reason why I was ordained, to walk, to walk alongside those who are most vulnerable. At a critical moment in his life, just like the son 
in that parable in our gospel this morning. He changed his mind. He changed his heart. And now working with the homeless, he is himself an agent of change. He's changing lives. He's changing circumstances. He's changing minds. And so I think we need to ask ourselves this this morning, are we open to change ourselves? Are we open to changing ourselves? Are we open to God's work in our lives? And most importantly, his will for us. And so I think the gospel this morning is nothing less than a call to change, a a call to conversion. And it's asking us to reconsider the choices that we have made, especially for ourselves. If we haven't taken our faith seriously enough, let us take another look at our faith and how we live out our faith and how we allow our faith to change us to change us so that we could be instrument of God's work in this world. To do the kind of work that Peter Day was called to do. To reach out to those who are most vulnerable around us. Those folks that cannot take care of themselves. And to be that instrument of healing and and peace and, and support to those folks. But we need to take our faith more seriously. Now, if if we've thought over the years, just like Peter did earlier in his life, you know, I go to Mass a couple of times a year. That's enough. Well, think again. You know, or if, if we said no to God and His will to us, we need to pray even harder. We need to pray for the wisdom to change that choice. And then to ask for the courage to say yes. Yes, Lord. Your will is much more better than the will that I have chosen for my life. Folks, God's calling us. He's calling us. He's summoning us and he's challenging us. Just like that father did for his son in that parable today. He's asking us to work for him in his garden, in his vineyard, and to do his work in this world. So what does that mean? I think it means for us that it's, it's a, daily, a daily look into our minds and our hearts and, and our souls and to recognize the gifts and the talents that, that the Lord has blessed us. And to be able to use those talents to reach out to those who are most vulnerable among us and to be Christ for them and to lead them to Christ. So what is your answer? What is your answer? Let us, uh, let us pray for that today and every day of our lives. To be able to, to recognize the call of the Lord summoning us sending us out into the world and to use whatever we have, you know, our gifts and our talents and our very lives to be able to change, to, be, to, to change, to be instruments of God's love in this world. And to remember the words from Cardinal Newman, God has created me to do him some definite service and I shall do good and I shall do his work. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
It rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As brothers and sisters in Christ, let us turn to our Heavenly Father now with all of our needs, praying especially for the needs of our world and for one another. For the leaders of the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to sustain and inspire them in their ministry. Let us pray for the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, may God God guide all people in their efforts to combat and treat global health threats. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the graces of clarity and active response in the discernment of our Heavenly Father's will, for all those considering a vocation to the priesthood or consecrated life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those struggling with chronic illness, anxiety, or depression, and for those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in need, that they may find guidance and assistance in the many services available through our generous support of the Bishop's Fund Appeal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, especially members of the parish, may they rejoice with the saints in God's everlasting kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our local community and for all who work to ensure its health and safety, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious Father, we ask you to hear us and answer us today in the name of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and through your Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our offertory hymn is our Father, we have wandered, and it is found on the reverse side of your people.
us stand to pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this, our offering, may find acceptance with you, and that through it, the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly, willingly, willingly into his passion, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, he said, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And we pray humbly that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Terry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Joining together our hearts and our voices, let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from all evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the glory are yours both now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on our faith and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the risen Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Let's take a moment in silence to pray for peace, peace in our world, and peace between each other. God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Be mindful of your word to your servant, O Lord, in which
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your may Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord with our lives. Amen. And have a great week, everybody. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is on your leaflet. Seek ye first.